unbelievable bacteria. Evil? Alien? Or smart? One of the ways bacteria enters the body is through an open wound. When the open wound goes clear down to a fractured bone, it is called an open fracture. When bacteria gain access to the deeper tissues through the open wound, the tissues become contaminated. Preoperative and prophylactic antibiotics are given to help decrease the infection rate with the hope of killing the bacteria in the contaminated field. In addition to preoperative and prophylactic antibiotics, a special treatment is done when there is an open fracture to further help prevent infection. This treatment consists of irrigating and washing the wound, as well as debridement of the dead tissue. Once the tissue has been adequately cleaned, the fracture needs to be reduced and stabilized. Three different ways to stabilize a fracture are with a plate, a rod, or an external fixator. The open wound is either left open for a variable amount of time or it is closed later on. At the time of wound closure, a skin graft or flap may be needed. To promote healing of the fracture, a bone graft may be needed usually four to six weeks after injury. Bone graft is obtained from the pelvis. The pelvis has a large reserve of bone that can be utilized. The bone that is harvested is cut into pieces and then added to the fracture where needed. Despite the best care, a certain percentage of open fracture injuries will become infected. When the tissues become infected by bacteria, white blood cells are attracted to the infected site where the bacteria are multiplying and causing inflammation. Bacteria multiply by replicating their DNA and then dividing into two identical bacterial cells. Due to this doubling of bacterial cells, the population of bacteria grows rapidly. Once at the site of infection, the white blood cells begin to ingest the bacteria. These bacteria, however, may survive and multiply within the white blood cells, causing the cells to burst, which releases the bacteria back into the tissues. Other types of bacteria can also produce a thick capsule that prevent them from being engulfed. Bacteria may also produce toxins used to destroy cells that try to attack them. Bacteria can also hide in dead bone or bone cells. This causes the antibiotic or white blood cells to be unable to reach the bacteria since the dead bone has no blood supply. In addition to the bacteria hiding in the bone, the bacteria grow rapidly. During this growth period, the bacteria are communicating with each other through a process called quorum sensing. Quorum sensing is the use of a chemical signal from one bacteria to another. As the bacterial population grows, so does the chemical signal concentration. Once the concentration of the chemical signal reaches a certain threshold, the bacteria then begin their attack. The bacteria attack the tissues, causing it to break down and die, which can lead to an abscess formation. The abscess must be drained and evacuated, followed by antibiotic treatment. Antibiotics can kill bacteria in several different ways. One way is by disrupting the cell wall which ruptures the bacteria.
Another way is by preventing DNA replication by blocking the unwinding of the DNA. A third way is by inhibiting the ribosomes from making proteins needed for the cellular structure and function. The last way is by blocking the enzymes that produce folate. Folate is needed for DNA synthesis and without it the cell will die. When hardware is used to stabilize the fracture, the story can become much more complex.